So we're currently three weeks into the uh, construction phase now. The first week was the installation of the site and the um, scaffolding. And the scaffolding is up there really, it has a cantilever system at the moment which allows us to work outside of flood risk and also makes us be able to carry this stone which has a rail that's included within the scaffolding to allow us to, to manage the high level of stone that we're going to be producing onto the bridge. The, um, the stonework has started and the pointing of the um, lime mortar joint. The reason for doing this at this time of the year is um, mainly because of um, the water levels are low um, and the, the lime mortar needs to be able to go off, uh, um, to set and go off so that we can continue the practice as quickly as possible. So the stone mixers are currently um, on site taking down the old um, broken stones and, and checking the existing stones that they're going to leave on site are in a good condition. They're now starting to rebuild the broken parapet from the ground up and um, there's three layers I believe of stone that need to be replaced and about half the length of the bridge. So they've got a number of weeks before that's completed so the, the use of the scaffolding um, will remain for that period as well due to the size of the stones that they're replacing. Within that works they're also um, looking at the installing some tie bars for each level of the masonry so that the um, any future events of accidents or damage to the bridge um, instead of the stone being damaged irreplaceably it's, it would um, more rather move the parapets and keep them intact so that they can be um, replaced or um, moved back into position um, with less of a closure than in the future. To ensure that the future stability of the structure remains we're installing um, bollards at either side of the structure for pre-warning for vehicles that are too wide. We're also looking to install signage that informs um, any vehicle ahead of the uh, restriction of the bridge um, of the, the width limit. The public feedback has been really helpful. Um, we've had over two and a half thousand members on our Facebook group. We've had local residents come in to us daily on site discussing the, the situations that they're dealing with and the site that we're dealing with at the moment. Um, and we, we're currently got obviously the official diversion that goes via Grimston Bar and onto the A1079 round to all the way around to Driffield, that's the official diversion that everyone, I stress everyone should use um, so that we don't um, go on roads that are unsuitable such as Buttercram and also High Catton down and through the village. Um, the, the roads simply aren't suitable for heavy vehicles or wide or long vehicles or, he, or large vehicles. Um, so it's really important to uh, utilise that official diversion which is the sign diversion. We've put extra measurements in at these locations that aren't unsuitable um, just to hopefully help the residents. Thanks to the residents for their, all their feedback and we really appreciate the disruption that the work's causing to them um, and we hope that the, uh, we can finish the work as soon as possible to get the road back open and everyone back to their normal lives.